The gold rush of the 1840s put California on the map. Treasure seekers from around the world converged here, forming towns that went from boom to bust in just a few short years. But one gold rush town that endures isn't too far away. In tonight's Hidden Adventures, Action News reporter Gene Higginson takes us to the historic town of Columbia. Welcome to Columbia, California where a street musician named Tater will play music reflecting California's Mexican heritage or songs from the more recent immigrants. Well, I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. Folks from around the world started coming to Columbia in 1848, and as park interpreter Kelly League tells us, it all started right after prospector John Walker dipped his pan into a creek. And in his first dip, in the first minute, he got something pretty close to that. The gold rush brought 25,000 people to Columbia. They lived here, worked here, raised their children, and died here. The rush lasted only about a dozen years, but when the gold dwindled, the town did not fade away and become a ghost town. Prospectors like 10-year-old Juliet Carroll from Oakland still come, not to find their fortunes, but to have some fun. So I'm panning for gold and rocks, and this is what I found. Her grandma, Sherry Byerly, says the trip here is a history lesson. They get to see how the olden days were. Columbia is two hours northeast of Fresno in the Sierra Mountains, one of California's historic gold country towns. It's now a state historic park, alive with museums and operating businesses. Like Eric White's vintage blacksmith shop. What we mostly do is make unique gift items for the people that come and visit Columbia. And they still come from around the world, like Jens Osterhau from Germany. We are here with my family, who's sitting there eating ice cream um, on a road trip. They think this Old West mining town is pretty unique. You don't have anything like that in Germany. Allison and her family from Pennsylvania found Columbia to be a pleasant stop. It's quaint, it's nice. We've enjoyed bringing the girls here to walk around, and we're enjoying ourselves. What makes Columbia unique is it's still a living, breathing town where visitors like Vanessa Tafoya and Laura Soto, who drove up from Berkeley, can get a feel for what life was like way back when. Since we were younger when we came, we were, we were more excited about getting the ice creams, getting candy, mm -hmm. but I feel like now we're like, wow, like the old house and stuff is pretty, pretty fun. About 2,000 people still live in Columbia, and resident Floyd Odegaard encourages visitors to take a close look. They need to go in every building and, and, and look around because every one of these buildings is historical. Like the old Wells Fargo office. The business was here. The parlor, which nowadays we'd call the living room, is there. There's a lot of history to see here in Columbia, and at the Jack Douglas Saloon, you can even taste the history with a genuine old-fashioned sarsaparilla. The keys of the antique piano in the saloon are being pounded often by Jack Douglas, whose name is a coincidence. He's not related to the saloon's namesake. He taught himself to play just a few years ago and learned these old-timey tunes in a thoroughly modern way. Yeah, I actually learned my songs from YouTube. Columbia State Historic Park has a lot to offer. Take it from Grandma. It's a great place to bring your kids and your grandkids. And after two hours of panning, the history lesson Juliet learned? Uh, well, it's sort of hard to find actual, like, gold. At Columbia State Historic Park in Tuolumne County, Gene Higginson, ABC 30 Action News. Thank you for watching. For more videos like this from ABC 30, just make sure to hit that subscribe button below.